Hello again, everyone. This is Chris Shearer, and that is the Robert Harding. That's right. And this is the Citizen Sports Weekly for March 31st, 2016. Fresh off the uh, Holiday Inn mini golf course. How'd you do? Not bad. That's good. Not bad. Yeah, I don't participate in those things. Nobody's ever asked me, you know, so I don't do it. Wow. That. I know. I'm so heartbroken. The smallest no. violin in the world. Uh, yes. So, anyways, enough about miniature golf. Let's talk about basketball, specifically college basketball, this being the last day of March. It's the last day of March Madness. March Although Sadness. It, it spreads into April. And for us here in central New York, it's double the fun. It is. The Syracuse men and the Syracuse women are both in the Final Four. And it's amazing. I mean, people have Final Four fever in this area. They're wearing Syracuse t-shirts and sweatshirts and they're going absolutely orange crazy. The TV stations, all they're showing, it's all you see on the local news here is uh, Syracuse. That's it. That's right. You know? So, uh, we're going to talk about the women and we're going to talk about the men. I want to talk about the women first because I really feel that, unfortunately, they're going to get overlooked a little bit because the men also made the Final Four. And, you know, I'd written a column a couple weeks ago saying that, you know, the women deserve their share of attention, that what they've done is amazing, and, uh, you know, I thought they were going to be overshadowed, and they kind of are, but I still think they are kind of poking out a little bit there, getting some attention, and I just think that's wonderful, because I'll tell you, what Syracuse has done as a women's basketball program over the last almost 10 years since Quentin Hillsman's took over the team is nothing short of extraordinary. I mean, usually the Final Four is a monopoly of a mm -hmm. small amount of teams, usually Connecticut. Baylor, Baylor Notre, Notre Dame, Notre Tennessee, Dame. Stanford. Stanford. Okay, uh, there's a limited amount of teams that really get to the Final Four on a regular basis. So for Syracuse to crash the party and get to the Final Four is extraordinary. They knocked off number one seed South Carolina in the regional semifinals, okay. which was right there. You saw like, hey, this team could actually do this. And then they played Tennessee in the regional final. Now, Tennessee is not as good as they've been in the past, okay? But it's still Tennessee, and they're still a very good team. And Syracuse, like, just mopped the floor up with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, just a, an amazing ch achievement. Uh, they they played Washington, another team that's in their first Final Four, in the uh, national semifinal. And most likely, I mean, 99.9% .9 sure, that if they were to win, they'd be playing UConn in the championship game. And you can't see, you just can't see UConn losing this. I mean, this team is undefeated. They have stream rolled to everybody. Uh, no one's gotten within 20 points of them in this tournament. And uh, Brianna Stewart, who went to high school in Cicero North Syracuse, uh, playing against, I guess you could say, her hometown team in her last college game, uh, that would be pretty cool. I think that would be a great story. Robert, do you have any thoughts about the women? You know, the, the Syracuse women's team, uh, what a great run, you know, through this tournament. And, uh, you know, the, the Final Four, it's, it's going uh, to be fun. You know, I think they, they have a good matchup against Washington. Uh, Washington's certainly a good, good team, uh, making it through their region. But I think Syracuse wins that game. And, boy, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that we get to see this UConn-Syracuse mm -hmm. matchup. I think, you know, for, for Central New Yorkers, uh, you know, it's just a juicy matchup. You know, mm -hmm. you have Brianna Stewart playing against the school, her hometown school, also the school she passed over to go to UConn. I had heard she was offered a scholarship by Syracuse when she was in eighth grade. Makes sense. I mean, really, that's how long that she's been that good. So, yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's pretty interesting, no doubt about it. Yeah, so that, you know, what a way to end your college career, you know, going up against, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Syracuse, the team you, you know, uh, the school that you, you know, grew up watching. Uh, that you know recruited you. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, was trying to get you to join. And, and junior uh, high, man, what what a you know what a story it would be. You know, to either way, you know, UConn wins, Syracuse wins. Just having that uh, national title game happen. So now uh, the men's team, what an incredible weekend they had. <laughs> the game against Gonzaga was amazing. You almost thought that they were going to get gypped at the end there by the referees with Trevor Cooney's foot not on the line there, but they held on and. Won that game, Tyler Lydon's uh, block there. Yeah. And they won that game. A great win against a good Gonzaga team. But then the game against Virginia. This is a team that Syracuse fans will be talking about for decades. I'll be I'll be in, like, the Boyle Center or Schwartz Towers or Stryker Homes. I'll be in an old folks' home in about 30, no, 40. Let's say 40 years, okay? And there will still be people talking about this game. Go ahead and make a joke. I know you want to. 
refrain. Yeah, he's going to refrain. Wow, there's a first. And uh, they're going to be talking about this game. So what an amazing effort. I mean, you know, a lot of teams you figure would have kind of packed it in down by that much. But Syracuse, to the credit, they played hard. Uh, they got the press going a little bit. They played some great defense. But they made shots, you know. Mal Malachi Richardson just stepped up and had an amazing second half, 21 points, I believe. And they made plays. And, you know, and again, everybody wants to give Bayheim a lot of the credit, as he should have some credit. But those players, I give them a lot of the credit. They made plays. They pulled off an amazing win. And now here they are in the Final Four. And we'll talk about the game with North Carolina in a minute. But I just want to, want to look back a little bit at Virginia first. But what were your thoughts about that game against Virginia on Sunday? You know, it... Uh... There were two things that struck me. You know, there was a point in the, in the game, you know, it was during, it was kind of in the midst of uh, Syracuse's press, and they were, you know, mounting their comeback and, cl you know, closing the deficit. And they cut away to Tony Bennett, the Virginia coach, and he looked lost. Mm -hmm. He just had this, uh, he, he just had a look on his face like, I'm getting out coached and there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. You know, and of course, you know, to your point, you know, you can have great coaching, but if the execution, ex execution isn't there, it doesn't matter, and you know Richardson stepped up. You know Wyden uh, had a couple good shots and was strong on the defensive end. You know Roberson, what a monster uh, he's been the past two mm -hmm. games. You know in, inside, so you know you put all these pieces together, and you know the thing about the Virginia game is Benege was terrible. Yeah, he did not have a good game. You know, so mm -hmm. I mean to think about that, to think that you know Benege, you know certainly their best player, um, had an off night mm -hmm. on both ends of the floor, really. Uh, you know, and this team stepped up. I mean, it's that that's a good sign in a way yeah. that you know these players can deliver. You know, some of their young players. So, you know, it's it's encouraging heading into the Final Four that they have a game like that against a number one seed. They really proved that they you know that they belong here. You know, it's amazing. But you figure three weeks ago when this was about to start, uh, there were three things we were talking about with Syracuse. Number one, there was the slump they had. They lost five out of their last six or four out of the last five, but they just did not play well at the end. They didn't even win a tourney game at the ACC tourney, and you're thinking they're not going to get in. That was number one. Uh, number two, Bayheim's comments on Tyler Roberson saying if he had anybody else, he would have played him. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, he was Bayheim took a lot of criticism for those remarks, saying people saying that he was very harsh. Uh, yeah. And then Trevor Cooney, that you know, this guy has just been horrible. I mean, he's just not played well at all. And uh, you look at Syracuse, they've, they've played, obviously they play together as a team, they've put together some great games, and they've advanced now to the Final Four. Tyler Roberson has played very well in the tournament and, and really helped out Syracuse with his rebounding. Okay? And Trevor Cooney, I mean, is not dominated, but he hasn't cost Syracuse either. He's made some key threes. He's made some great plays on the defensive end, like we just discussed at the end of the Gonzaga game. So it's kind of funny how... Things can completely flip in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's talk about the game against North Carolina. Yeah. Syracuse has already played the Tar Heels twice this season, uh, which I think is a benefit and also a disadvantage. It's a benefit because obviously, you know, both teams know each other now. I mean, Syracuse definitely knows North Carolina, and on the other hand, North Carolina knows Syracuse. They know the zone. They've seen it. They practice against it. They played against it. They they kind of know like what to expect. It's not going to be the unknown like. Most of the other teams Syracuse plays in the tournament. So it's going to be a tough game. I, I just think that Syracuse, I mean, you know, they're playing with house money. And there shouldn't be any pressure on them. North Carolina should have pressure on them. But that being said, I mean, look, Syracuse is a nine-point underdog in this game. And they're a nine-point underdog for a reason. And, you know, I want to think Syracuse could win this game. I just don't think they're going to. I just think that North Carolina's experience against Syracuse is going to help them out against the zone. And I don't know whether Syracuse can, can continue to play this well for this long a period of time. And I hate to say this because I would like to see Syracuse get to the title game, but I just think the Tar Heels are going to win this game, and, uh, and it's going to end the Cinderella run for Syracuse. Yeah, I think for Syracuse to win, uh, they can't have you know Benajay with an off night. No. They can't fall into a uh, you know they can't fall behind you know by double digits uh, you know like they did against Virginia. You know the the thing that they had working for them with Virginia is Virginia is a very slow tempo mm -hmm. team. You know they, you know they play uh, a, a slow style. So when you apply the press, you know that's not something they're used to, and they they couldn't react well. North Carolina is a different animal, mm -hmm. and you know they have uh, some great talent. You know up and down that lineup, and uh, 
you know, and, and Roy Williams. So, you know, the I, I think the Tar Heels have the advantage here. You know, I think Syracuse can win this. I mean, you know, they've proven this year that they can compete with the Tar Heels. You know, the, I think the difference now is that, you know, they seem to have some pieces working where you go into this game, you know, yeah, they're a 10 seed, but they can they have a legitimate shot at winning this. You know, I, I just think on paper, though, you know, the Tar Heels, they have that consistency over time. They have the length. They have the players. They're a much different team than Virginia, and I think they can win this yeah, game. Yeah, it's, an, it's unfortunate because who knows? Maybe we'll be wrong. I would look, don't be wrong. I'd love to be wrong. It'd be great to see Syracuse playing for the national championship next Monday night. But, I mean, like I said, North Carolina's played them twice, beat them twice. And, yes, Syracuse did come close in both those games, and they did have a chance to tie at the end of the game at the Dome. Or, I'm sorry, the game uh, in Chapel Hill. I'll give you that, okay? They have been competitive against North Carolina. Uh, but I just think certain matchups do not work for Syracuse in this game, and I think that's what's going to cost them. So, But we'll see. You never know. I mean, that's why they play the games. I mean, we don't play them on paper. They play them on the court. So we'll see what happens. But... For us, we have to get through this weekend with all this orange madness going on around us. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's fun to be in Central New York uh, this time of year. Uh, you know, especially when Syracuse is making a deep run, and then you add the women's team into it, and mm-hmm. you know they're in the Final Four too. And you could have a scenario where you're watching Syracuse basketball games four nights in a row. Yeah, and, and playing for national so, championships, maybe. So, you know? I mean, that's that's phenomenal. And, uh, you know, I mean, the the women have a great shot, you know, to at least make it to the championship yeah. game. Play UConn, you know, that's a tough matchup. Yeah. But, you know, hey, anything can happen. Things can I mean, that's why you play the games. There's upsets. I mean, there, upsets happen. The Colts lost to the Jets in Super Bowl three. Buster Douglas beat Mike Tyson back in 1990. Okay, upsets can happen. Yes, you know there's a lot of other upsets we could throw into the mix, but uh, I don't think we're going to go through all of that <laughs> unless you want. Unless you want to mention one, since I threw up two. No, it's no, up to you. I, I mean, it's uh, you know, I think uh, I think for the for the women's team, you know, no matter what happens, this is a huge accomplishment yeah. for them. Just a huge. Uh, uh, you know, milestone to to reach and to really establish themselves as, you know, a big player in yeah. women's basketball. You know, you need moments like this to really mm-hmm. lift the program up and, you know, put it on a different tier. I think this will do that. It might not be seen now, mm-hmm. but, you know, in another year or two, I think uh, yeah. folks will realize that, hey, this, this program's for real. You ready to wrap it up? I'm done. All right. So, folks, hey, thanks for watching the video. Enjoy the games this weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun, folks. And, uh, you know, and if you go out to watch the games, and I'm going to say it again, I say it all the time, please do not drink and drive. We'll see you next week.